everyone. It's me. Um, it's good to see you again. It's good to be back. Um, if you've seen one of my other videos where I just, I have this uh, photo book that I got from a thrift store, right? And it was plain. It didn't have the decorations on it. But I wanted to emulate an old one that was given to me as a gift so that I could use all the old photos in it looked like this and here's some of the old photos that came in it um, it was an old Italian family and they were all put in with these little bitty paper corners anyways but when I saw this I thought this was absolutely you know fabulous and how wonderful it would be to recreate it with something new and something archival because this is obviously not archival. It's been falling apart. And so I had found a blank one. Oops, pictures are falling out. Let me set this back over here. All right. I had found a blank one and I had some scrapbook paper that I went ahead and decorated the front and the back. And then I did the insides as well in the front and the back. But this is just kind of plain for me. I'm not quite done with it yet. So I pulled the this off of the things. They just pulled right apart. And I'm gonna put I'm gonna do some uh, stenciling with some texture paste. <clears throat> now this is very feminine, kind of very delicate. I'm not this isn't quite my forte. I'm more bold and more um, kind of in your face. But I was making this for my daughter. And uh, <clears throat> so I was, I just, I wanted to beef it up a little. So I thought maybe adding some texture paste or something to it, you know, to the front of it and then spraying it. I don't know. We'll see. If worst comes to worst, I'll scrape it all off and just put another piece of paper on it. Oh, good grief. I can't get this open. Mm. There we go. I haven't used my texture paste in a while. Wow. Look at that. Yep. That's what happens when you don't use it in a while. I'm just going to scrape. It's not mold. It's just dirt. I don't know how that happened. But let me find a paper towel. I'm just going to scrape the stuff off the top. Yeah, this is just my homemade stuff, so it's not, I didn't, you know, lose a whole lot of money on this, but I mean, it's just, it was the perfect texture paste, and I forgot to, whoops, I guess that was stupid. And then right across the top. And there we go. Ah, throw it away in an old bag so it doesn't get all over the inside of my trash can. Ah. And there we go. Let's get a baby wipe. If you don't use your baby wipes very often and you find that sometimes they want to dry out, uh, I've got a squirt bottle that I put a little bit of glycerin and a little bit of alcohol in it that um, I'll use to either clean up or I'll spray the inside of my bag, my baby wipes. I mean, mine are still pretty damp, so I'm not worried about it, but I'll just, I'll just spray the inside of my bag. 
Just a little bit. I don't even have to get it all on the thing as long as it's inside the bag. Push out the extra air. And that little bit of moisture will keep it nice and mushy for you. Alrighty, so let's try this. See, all done. Oh, what I didn't do is, all right, that's not strong enough, so let me set that up here and get my stir stick. I've got an old dowel that I use for stirring just about everything. Just want to make sure it's nice and fluid. Not runny, but... Make sure it didn't dry to the bottom or anything like that. So that's cool. It worked. It's nice. get my jar of water. Alrighty, I'll be right back. Okay. Alrighty, so let's try this. Let's see. I had a giant stencil that had different designs on it and it wouldn't fit in my notebook where I keep my stencils at. So I just cut out the one corner. It makes it a little bit more manageable. Some you can do that too, some you can't. So I'm going to get a little bit, not a lot. I'm going to press this down. I said I'm not... I'm not going to make a big, huge deal about this. I just want that little bit of texture on there with the design and I'm scraping it pretty uh, you can't really see that can you yeah I guess you can I'm scraping it fairly thin and I'm going back over getting all the excess and just pulling it across I didn't even put that much in there, but there's enough there that is helping me cover everything I want to. scraping all the excess off. One with with a really thin line, it doesn't take as long for your uh, texture paste to dry. Now look how pretty that is. <clears throat> Can you see that? Yes, I got some on the edge, so I'm just going to wipe that off real quick. here. And there we go. And look, look how clean and crisp that is. So I really, really like that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to this and I'm going to wipe off my stencil. I've seen some people, you know, use their stencils and, and just set them aside and they don't wipe them off or clean them right away. And, oh, I couldn't imagine what happens when the texture paste dries. I know some people who keep like a, an old dishwashing tub 
you know, those plastic ones that are smaller than a kitty litter box, but deeper that people used to wash their dishes in all the time. I've seen them keep those next to their desk with uh, soapy water in it. All right. Let that dry. And I'll be doggone if I cannot find my towels. Huh. It's not quite a towel, but nope, that's just styrofoam. Duh. Nope, not that. Alright, give me just a second. I'm sorry. Alright, my granddaughter was over on the, on the weekend and her and I did some crafts. Uh, she likes to do, you know, particular crafts each time she comes over. And one of her favorite things to do is uh, mixed media mashup. Now what that is, is if you don't know, is um, I got uh, the one who came up with it is Stacy Evans over at Pink Poodle. And she created a deck of cards with craft prompts on it. And you take a, you know, a 12 by 12 or an 8 and a half by 11 or whatever size you want. And you mix up the cards and then you just draw a card and you do whatever is on that card. You know, either draw a doodle, stencil texture paste, um, you spray inks, uh, you know, draw circles or use squares, tissue paper, decoupage, I mean, just a, a list of them. And then when you're done, you come out with this piece of art. It's absolutely beautiful. And so that's what her and I like to do. Well, she likes to do it all the time. So I was trying to get her to do something different this time around. And I had to set up, um, oh, good grief. I set up a different room with a bigger table so her and I could craft together this past week. Um, let me get my page. There we go. Uh, there it is. Okay, so that was mine. What I ended up with. And we were going to cut these up and make um, a different type of journal with uh, what was left over. But we didn't, we got to the journal cover, but we didn't get any further because we were doing a bunch of other stuff too. So, but this weekend I was doing something different and I was trying to teach her to get interested or at least expose her to different types of crafts like jelly plate and um, stenciling and uh, uh, what else did we do? Oh, I'll be doggone. Anyways, I was trying to get her in to learn about other crafts so she didn't just get stuck in one mindset of, you know, just doing mixed media mashup. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. Yeah, see, that's just about dry. Okay, so we will set that one aside. What else do we want to do? I've got, uh, I don't know. I pulled out a couple. Got one with words. This has got a little bit of words right here. I think I'm going to add some right here. Just in the texture paste. See, I don't even get very much out of there. Just a little bit. That's even too much, I think. And I'm just going to... Just a little over here. Put just a little bit more. Like 
there. Uh, do a different piece. It's not all the same words. I like that one. It says, what was yesterday? Before that. See, on word stencils, sometimes it's hard to get it to show up with texture paste. But the key is um, doing it very, very thin layer and very, uh, what do you call it, sparse. Now I'm just going to wipe this off. On the back, because even if you did it real thin, you know, it's going to spooge through the back. All right. Let's make towels and wipe that dry. Um, I don't know. You see that? I see a little spot I want to get off of there. Okay. Close this up. Okay. Um, now what I want to do is I don't want to like cover the whole thing. You ever buy those... Uh, like those prepackaged salads at Walmart or at the grocery store and inside they've got the little tray that's got your croutons, your cheese, your whatever, you know, separate. Um, these little trays that you pop off the top are perfect for paint, for Mod Podge, for stain glaze, whatever you want. Even to just put little things in to separate them because they're pretty deep. But, uh, I've got some homemade purple glimmer mist I made. And I want to squirt a little, ooh, that's a little bit much. Squirt a little bit in there. And then, what do I want to do? I want to add some water to it, but I don't want to spray it so hard it's going to get over there. All right, and then I'm going to take a really small paintbrush, get it wet, pull up some of this paint, and all I want to do is touch, just touch, ah, eh. I might need a bigger paintbrush because that's actually looking kind of pretty, so I'll get a bigger one. Get it a little wet. Can't really see it too much right there. It may not look like much. And I think this purple is one of her favorite colors, my daughter's favorite colors. So I'm just going to run this over. just to stain that uh, texture paste some. But I don't want it too thick, so I'm gonna dab.
Now I've got to thin this out just a little bit so it doesn't look like such a harsh line. So I'm going to pull that color out just a little. There we go. I'm going to pull a little bit of this purple down here. In here. And we might as well go right up here. Add a little bit of water to that. Just so it blends. Alrighty, now I do have an itty bitty funnel. Let me get to it. Oh, come on, where did you go? Well, I had an itty bitty funnel. <clears throat> Give me a second, I'm going to put this back in here. Okay, I pulled out some um, some Perlex powder pigments. They're from Jacquard. Um, this one is it's a set of twelve, and I believe I paid maybe fifteen dollars for it at Dick Blick. And this one is let's see, that's a gray lavender. Now these powders are really, really fine. And you don't need that much. Oh, we'll see that's quite a bit. See all that pigment on the underside. I'll use that. And what fell down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pigment with a dry paintbrush. Okay, and I'm just going to brush it over 
the purple. This one is called pink gold. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. See that? That little bit of shine. It's not a lot. This works. This stuff you can pretty much put on anything, you know? You could put a piece of double sided tape down, tap it on there, brush it over with your paintbrush, and fill that up. And you'll have a really beautiful strip of, you know, whatever color you need. But, yeah, this is, it's a very fine powdered pigment. And it's very uh, shiny, glimmery, and uh, glittery. But it's a really fine glitter. It's not... One of those glitters, you know, that you just sprinkle out on your Christmas stocking when you're drawing your names in blue. It's just really, really fine. I believe they call this an artist pigment, but I could be wrong. Nah, it takes a few minutes. I'm going to take a bigger brush. And just brush over the excess. Now it's very fine. It's very faint. but you can see it. I didn't want to spray any more shimmer mists or anything on there because I didn't want any more liquid on the paper. All of that, I'm still pulling pigment up off of the inside of the protector tab, whatever that's called. And I'm just going to... This is kind of like burnishing it in a little. I'm doing it very, very gently. <clears throat> now I'm going to pull a little bit of pigment. You know, you can make this as deep, as dark as you want. You can add a little bit of water to this and uh, get it to spread further. Me, I'm just experimenting because this is the first time I've done anything like this. And it's the first time I've actually used Perlex. I've got some other mica powders I've used from, you know, like AliExpress and uh, things like that. Put that down. Just kind of rub that in. And it's not, like I said, it's not very, oh gosh, you can't even see it. There we go. If you can see the shimmer here a little bit. I want to try something. I'm 
probably going to regret this, but I'm going to stick the side of this in there and just pick up a little. That's a lot of pigment. Tap a lot of that out. Let's see what this does. I think it saves me a little bit of time. Just a little bit. I've seen people uh, make molds from like Sculpey and then after it's dried and they unmold it, um, they put Perlex on it and they're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, see that's pretty. I wish my camera could pick this up. Maybe you can see a little bit of the, the shimmer. Get a little bit more, not that much, and then just do this right here. I just want to pop the stencil part out a little bit. I'm not going to go overboard on this because I think it's pretty enough as it is. And I really wish some of this excess, there we go, off the side. I'm going to put this back on top before I put this on. Okay. Now see, that's all we did. You know, we put some stencils on. We, we dyed the stencils a little bit. Stained them, you know, and added some perlex. And it didn't do, a, you know, like a giant bunch. But it added a little bit. And that's kind of what I've been dying to do is to see how the stenciling would look. I'm not going to worry about doing the back of the notebook, you know, because it is the back. There's the back side. And I'm not going to stencil the inside, so that just doesn't make any daggum sense. And I'm thinking if it wasn't black ribbon. I was trying to come up with a way to put some lace or something on here, or maybe I can just add some lace to the black ribbon. I'm not sure. All right, but I'm going to put this back on. See, this just pulls right out. Oh, I need my other hand. Well, it worked better last time. There we go. There's that one. Oh, it fell out. How did I do it last time? Because I know. I feel like the three stooges trying to do this. I said it worked better last time. Come on. There we go. Well, maybe it was just... I think I was doing it... Doing it the other way or backwards. I'm not sure. But I did just pull this thing off so I know it comes back on. Alright, give me a minute. Fiddle with this and I will get this back on. It's not as hard as it looks, I promise. I'm just making it more complicated. <laughs> okay, I figured it out. I don't have these hooked yet. I just have them lined in there. I was trying to remember. It's been a couple days or so since I've 
since I've done this. And it's going to prove me a liar again. Good golly. There we go. I don't have a machine, you know, one of those book binding machines. There. So it makes it a little difficult. There we go. Push these in there. Turn this so that the locking mechanisms are on top. Then you take this one little piece on the end that sticks out. Can you see that? That piece right there. Okay. Now I believe. <laughs> I believe this locks in here. I don't know how, but it does. It did before. And then you lock this side, and then the same with this. You lock this side, and then you lock this side. <sighs> Come on. Well, like I said, there we go. All that does is holds it together. Now it did, oops, I didn't want to do that. And I probably am doing this wrong, but you know, hey, it's my book and I'm, I'm going to figure this out. Well, anyway, <sighs> well, maybe not because now it doesn't want to. Now it doesn't want to close. That's because it's got to get turned again. Oh, good grief! You know, I'll be really surprised if I even put this silly video up. <laughs> wow, that was a whole lot more difficult than it needed to be, right? All right, well, it's not a whole lot more finished than it was before, but it's got that little bit of extra. And even if you can't see it too much on the computer or through my camera, the shimmer is just absolutely gorgeous. It really is. Um, I haven't quite figured out what I want to do next. I, I keep drawing a blank, like a brain fart when it comes to working on this because I don't want to mess it up and I don't want it to leave it just plain. So if you guys have any ideas um, or any suggestions, uh, give me, you know, some comments down in the, or some suggestions down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you like my video. Share it if you want to. And I will be back again soon with another video. Hopefully, you know, either working on this and there's something else I want to do, but I'm trying to get all my supplies and, and like the logistics in my head together about creating a little uh, fairy village. I don't know if it'll be the next video or the next couple, but... Um, it, uh, it's going to be soon. I've been collecting pieces and, and all kinds of things and ideas. So that's on the agenda. So always remember to find the humor in life. Because if you don't, life sucks. And on that note, I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. And God bless you. Bye.